Hello everyone and welcome to this edition, actually the first edition of FinTech Whiteboard. So today we're going to do data analytics in a nutshell. And so we're going to try to understand exactly how data analytics works. And I have a very simple way of looking at it. So hopefully this will help you and your team understand and how to implement it and kind of what you're looking for and also some of the key pieces of it. So data analytics in a nutshell. So to understand data analytics, we got to start at the beginning. So the first thing that you have to talk about is the data. So you've got data all over your credit union. The data is everywhere. You have data in your core. You have data possibly in uh, credit cards. You have data possibly in a, a mortgage system. Uh, there's data in home banking. There's data in mobile. There's, there's data basically everywhere. And so your first step on your, on your data analytics journey is to corral all that data. And a lot of times you'll hear it called a data warehouse. Um, there's a lot of different names for it, but somehow you've got to get all this data so that you can sync it up in one nice little database where it's all correlated. And just so you understand why this is difficult or because it doesn't seem that difficult when I draw it out is because over here, you'll have some duplicate data. So in the credit card system that's on your core, they may call it due date. You know, that might be the way they term uh, when the date of your credit card is due. But over here, they might call it next pay or something along those lines. And so you've got all this data you need to normalize, collect, and get it into this data warehouse. That's step one. Now, assuming that you get step one done, and oh, by the way, this, is where a data governance committee will come in. So that's why you need a data governance committee is because these people are the ones that have to sort of figure out things like this. They're also the people who, when you get a new system, so let's say you add you know, something new like voice and it has specific data that you can use. They're the ones that decide how that fits into the data warehouse. So that's step one, is your data warehouse. Now let's go on to step two. The next thing that happens is you're going to find that there are all kinds of people who have algorithms. Now, what is an algorithm? An algorithm is basically a formula that can be applied to the data, right? Plus the algorithm is going to equal some outcome. So for instance, this algorithm may help you find all of the people who would be interested in a new car. And it may use uh, data from lots of different sources. It may get, use data from your auto lending. It may use data from you know Facebook. Maybe you've purchased some Facebook data. However, but somehow it's going to, you're going to take the data, you're going to apply this algorithm, probably from a vendor or somebody, and it's going to spit out a file for you to work with. And so this file is usually going to be a list of names, emails, uh, something that you can use to identify the members and possibly some extra data uh, like maybe the rate that might be attractive to them or uh, who knows what, but it's going to spit out most times a file. Now, once you have that, so you've got your, your data and you've got your algorithms and now you have your output, the next step is what to do with this file. And that's where things get interesting. So most of the time when we want to work on uh, this, we get this file, there's a couple different ways that we could deal with it. So we got to tell this member that, you know, they can get whatever this offer is. Now, some people react well to email, right? So you may want to do an email advertisement and you need a system to do that. Uh, some people may be okay with seeing a banner in your home banking or your mobile, right? So you may want to send it to it that way. You may want to send them uh, or put a banner out and uh, you may want to customize that banner. You want to make sure that it's only reaching the people that care because this was a very custom list. 
Some people may be okay with just old-fashioned snail mail, so you may just want to send them a, an advertisement or put it in their statement or, or whatever you need to do there. You may want to call them. You may have such a good deal that it's worth a outbound phone call, right? However you do it, you have to have good data. You have to have their email address. You might need their phone number. Oh, by the way, you could also SMS them this deal. You could send a text. There are lots of different ways. Now, my question to you is, do you know how someone wants to be contacted? And do you have the data to support it? So if you know how someone wants to interact, you can easily get their attention. Now, you may think, okay, good, I've got their attention, but now what? Well, this is where things get really interesting. So you've got your data, you've got your algorithms, now you have your offers and your, your marketing, basically, however you're gonna get this data to them. And remember, the key here is that this is very targeted data. So we're looking to you know go ahead and, and find this person directly. It's very individualized data. Now, let's say that you got all this way and suddenly, you now have to do fulfillment. Let's say that they're interested in this car rate that you've just offered them. You know, they, they logged into home banking. They saw a fantastic banner that said, you know, you could get a 0% loan because you have insurance with us or whatever it is. And this member is very, very excited. And he wants to take you up on it and get moving. He can't wait to, to go get a new car. So he clicks on the banner, and once he clicks on the banner, what happens? Well, that's the interesting part, right? Uh, nine times out of 10, what I've seen at most uh, credit unions is that it's going to go to a form. And the form is just going to look like any other email form that you can see. And so that form is just gonna ask some information, and it's gonna say, click Submit, and someone will get back to you and the problem is is that when we uh when we do that these people are pretty savvy these days and they're not happy because what they wanted was to click a few buttons and have something in their hand that would allow them to go buy their new car tomorrow so this section is fulfillment and it's a problem because you've got to sort of master all of these sections. Now, if we look at this line, step one, you've got to get your data. And then step two, you're going to have algorithms. They may come from a lot of different places. Um, they're not always going to be offers. Sometimes they might be dashboards to tell you, um, you know, what to do with uh, rates or what to do with a certain, you know, mortgage or here is some accounts to look into but I would say a lot of the times they're going to be offers because the offers are what's going to drive the margin getting the the right person and you can think of it like this we're going to get the right person the right deal or the right offer at the right time on the right channel and we're gonna make it easy one click that's what people are looking for now like we said I understand that not everybody can do the one click thing because if it were super easy everyone would be doing it but this is the essence of digital so what does this mean when we chase it down? We got step one, step two, we got step three, getting the offer out to them, and then step four, which is fulfillment. What does this mean for you? It means that you have to make sure, number one, that your contact information for your members is up to date. Two, you've got to make sure that you have a digital marketing um, capability uh, three you've got to make sure that um, 
you have uh, you know home banking, mobile, whatever these digital channels are, that you have a way to provide digital fulfillment. And finally, you have to trust your data. And that's why it all starts right here, over in the data warehouse. And that's why you need a data governance committee. And that's why this is not easy stuff and everybody struggles with it. But that's the key. This is the continuum. Data analytics in a nutshell. If you have any questions, I'd love to hear from you. Uh, we do this kind of work for a lot of folks. So if you're interested, want to talk to us about it, please just go to, simple enough, just go to www.big-fintech.com and you can talk to us there or contact us. You can catch me uh, easy enough. You can just email me at jb at big cu dot com um, or if you're looking for me on the old Twitters you can find me at JB fintech so this has been a fintech whiteboard and data analytics in a nutshell thanks everyone <laughs>